Today is often considered the birthday of the church because it was on this day that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples who were gathered in the upper room and filled them with the presence of God. This is the, the most overlooked, perhaps, uh, point or aspect of our faith as Christians is that God, in our baptism, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in your soul, that you become a temple of the Holy Spirit, that God comes to live in us. When the Holy Spirit came to the disciples, they were no longer afraid, and they went out into the streets and publicly proclaimed Jesus Christ. And many of the people that were gathered there for Pentecost, St. Peter said to them, This Jesus whom you crucified has been made Lord and God. And they realized what they had done and said, What should we do? And he said, Repent and be baptized. And so there were 3,000 people that day that were baptized and added to the church and were filled with the Holy Spirit. We notice that they were already gathered there for Pentecost, which was a celebration in the Old Testament. And that was the celebration of the receiving of the Ten Commandments from the Lord on Mount Sinai. When the people were gathered, they were freed from slavery in Egypt by the power of the Lord. And then Moses went up on the mountain and prayed for 40 days. And then the Lord came down to the mountain and it began to shake like an earthquake. There was thunder and lightning and smoke and, and cloud came to rest on the mountain, the presence of God. And a loud trumpet blast that grew louder and louder of the voice of the Lord speaking directly to each person that was gathered there saying, I am the Lord your God, you shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. Keep holy the Lord's day. Honor your father and mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbors. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods. All these things filled the people with fear as they saw these signs and heard the voice of God speaking. And they said, don't let the Lord speak to us directly anymore. It is too frightening. Let him speak through Moses. And so the Lord agreed. He spoke through Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments. This same Lord is the one who came down to earth in Jesus Christ. And he began to preach to them from the Sermon on the Mount, the Mount of Beatitudes, and instead of thunder and lightning and the loud trumpet blast, it's the words of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You have heard it said, you shall not kill. I say to you, anyone who grows angry with his brother is liable to judgment, and so on. So he gives us the new law of the gospel, which is not written on tablets, but it's written in our hearts. It is the Holy Spirit. The people in the Old Testament were not able to keep the commandments. They said, we will do everything the Lord says, but shortly thereafter, they built the golden calf. They fell into idolatry. They worshiped other things besides God. And so they realized we need something more than just knowing what the law is. We need grace. We need the ability to do it. And I noticed that in my own life. I'm not able to keep God's commandments on my own. I need help. And that is the grace of the Holy Spirit. The Lord says, I will give you a new heart. I will take from you your hearts of stone and give you a natural heart. And I will put my spirit within you that you can observe all my statutes and decrees. And this is the day when that happens. The Holy Spirit the Lord gives to us so that we can be faithful to him. We are clothed with power from on high to be able to do what Jesus did, to heal people by the laying on of hands, to drive out demons in the name of Jesus, to speak in his name and to bring others to Christ. We're all called to do these things, and it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we open wide our doors of our hearts today to receive the Holy Spirit. As we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Hoy celebramos el cumpleaños de la iglesia. En este día el Espíritu Santo descendió sobre, sobre las apóstoles, que fueron reunidos en el cenáculo para la oración. 
empezaron a hablar en lenguas y atrevidamente salieron a proclamar el, el Evangelio de Jesucristo. Muchas personas se reunieron en Jerusalén ese día. Pentecostés ya era un día festivo del Antiguo Testamento, la celebración de recibir la ley de Dios en el monte Sinai. El Señor le dijo a Moisés y al pueblo, Yo te prepararé vida o muerte. Si guardas los mandamientos, recibirás vida. Si los rompes, encontrarás la muerte. Escoge la vida. La gente dijo, todo lo que el Señor ha dicho, lo haremos. Sin embargo, eran demasiado débiles para guardar los mandamientos. Necesitamos algo más, además de los mandamientos. Y ese es el Espíritu Santo. El Señor le dijo a Ezequiel, Tomaré de vosotros vuestros corazones de piedra, y os daré corazones de carne. Pondré mi espíritu en vosotros para que observéis mis estatus, estatutos y decretos. Jesús nos da este nuevo espíritu en Pentecostés, llenando cada una de los, las personas que se arrepienten y son bautizadas con el Espíritu Santo. Lo único que puede hacer que el Espíritu Santo deje nuestros corazones es pecado mortal. Podemos ser perdonados en el sacramento de la, de la reconciliación, y Jesús nos devolverá al estado de gracia. Jesús nos da el poder dándonos el Espíritu Santo. Somos capaces de hacer lo que Jesús hizo. Podemos expulsar espíritus malignos por el nombre de Jesús. Podemos curar a los demás. Podemos hablar en el nombre de Cristo y traer a otros a Cristo. Nos alienta a abrir las puertas de nuestro corazón al Espíritu Santo hoy. Ven, el Espíritu Santo llena el corazón de los fieles. Enciende en ellos el fuego de tu amor. Envía tu Espíritu y ellos serán creados y renovarás la faz de la tierra.